For those of you who aren't familiar with the Motivational Minute, it is a segment that was founded on a show called Sunday Night Salad that airs and records out of Portland, Oregon. You can find that show on the Making New Enemies YouTube, but for now we will focus on motivation. This tape is really meant to provide you with some actionable things that you can do in your life, some changes you can make, and some ways you can impact your own well-being as well as those around you. As you listen to this and you learn how to apply it to your own life, understand two things. One, the motivation you need to be better is already inside of you. And two, that you have to do this every day, especially when it's hard, because when it's hard is when it's the easiest to slip. And when you slip, you keep keep on slipping, slipping. You gotta keep doing it. I think if we take these steps and we really try to better ourselves and those around us, that eventually we will unify. This is the Motivational Minute album. This is the Motivational Minute album. A lot of people, myself included, don't always like the things that make them feel most self-conscious, most vulnerable. We often will look at ourselves in the mirror and maybe poke around and feel those extra flabby areas and maybe not have as much self-love as we should. But I tell you, a dangerous pattern people get into is trying to love somebody else before you love yourself. Now, I'm not saying that you should celebrate your jelly rolls. Maybe you're cool with them. But what I am saying is that you can't really love anyone else until you're able to fully love your own flaws. And when you love your own flaws, and if you want to change that about yourself, you can open up about that with your partner. It's going to make you feel stronger in the end. So I tell you, before you go loving somebody else, you got to love your love handles. Dating in the digital age brings its own unique sets of challenges, the most of which is the ability to constantly communicate. You got IG DMs, you got Twitter DMs, you got Tumblr DMs, isn't there a Tumblr DM? You got voicemails, text messages, you got the carrier pigeon. You have so many ways to communicate with people that over communicating can be a thing. But that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about no communication, also known as ghosting. As ghosting. As ghosting. When people start getting acquainted and they get familiar with each other, it goes one of two ways. You either go full blown relationship or you both kind of stop talking. Either it's a mutual decision or one person just isn't that into it. But the problem with not being into it is the way you go about communicating. People will just fucking disappear. Disappear. You know, you really should be more respectful than that. The other person, they deserve more than that. You should at least shoot them a text message or use one of these digital avenues to be like, hey, it's been great, but I'm not into it. So do them a favor, hand yourself one. Don't ghost. Don't ghost. Just
Don't ghost. Don't ghost. We all know how this goes. You meet someone new, you're feeling optimistic, you go on a couple dates, and heck, maybe you even get that best friend seal of approval. Things are going super well, but still you find yourself, maybe in your time away, swiping on Bumble, texting your ex, giving your number to the cute boy up the street at the coffee shop. Why? Why are you doing these things when you are obviously feeling somebody else? Why take this one foot in, one foot out approach instead of just communicating openly about how you're feeling and and where you hope it heads? Maybe the other person can also be feeling you and something really special could be brewing, but you may not ever know. Because if you always have a backup, it's going to leave you jacked up. Love is something that can absolutely set you on fire, on fire. But something that's been really firing me up lately is hearing when someone else refers to their lover as their better half, their better self, or someone who completes them. Now, I totally get the sentiment. I get that people bring out the best in each other, especially when you're in love, in a deep love. But the problem that I really have with it is that I think a lot of people fill the holes that they don't like about themselves with the love of somebody else. You can't really expect to become whole because there's going to be a point where either you're not going to have that person anymore or they're not going to have you. You have to be able to rely on yourself. I always think of my grandma who lived by herself for the last 17 years of her life after my grandpa died. You know, She was very independent and so was he. And they liked things about each other and they brought out the best in each other, but they were okay being alone. You really can't expect someone to fill the holes in your life without first becoming whole yourself. You know, I had a really bad tendency to reach for the bong or the beer when I had a shitty day at work. See my ex at a party? Did the same thing. Grandma passed away? How quickly can I get fucked up to forget this? But this is a really dangerous pattern that can often suppress and really bury the problems that you have that you need to address to truly move on. The problem with not addressing these issues in a sober state is that these tendencies tend to spiral out of control. Now, I'm not saying that if you alleviate your anxiety and depressions with substance that you have any sort of problem, that's not it at all. But what I am saying is that it will turn into a problem if you can't address your issues without a cold one. There are a ton of things to bum out about. Let me tell you, if it's either inside of us or outside of our home walls, there are a ton of things that we could be talking about and actively trying to fix. But instead, we are just doing the talking. We are not doing the fixing. It is so easy to sit and talk about what we want to fix about ourselves, what we want to fix about our society. plenty of things that we could be doing to help each other in small ways. Now I know the idea of fixing a problem is daunting, any sort of problem, be it inside us or out. But I'm telling you that one small action won't change the world, but a bunch of small actions in succession will do a lot of good. So instead of recognizing the problem from your lazy boy, why don't you get your lazy ass up? up 
There is a dangerous misconception in the creative community that you need drugs to make good art. And our history kind of agrees with that. We got Ernest Hemingway, who just loved the sauce. We got Chris Farley, who loved blow and donuts. And then we got Hunter S. Thompson, who Lord knows what he took, but he was on a lot of stuff. But the problem is relying on those things to be creative. I'm not saying that you can't have a creative thought and a damn good one when you're on drugs, because usually when you're on drugs, you're relaxed, you're with friends, maybe with the exception of some uppers. But when you have this idea that you need to keep going to something to produce, you're going to burn out. You're going to run into an area where it's going to be kind of scary and you're not going to be able to utilize your creative brain in a sober state. You'll feel like you have a wall around you at some point. And I'm speaking from experience. As my friend Benny Hemingway says, art don't come from a bomb, man. It comes from the heart. I recently realized that I have a habitually destructive relationship with drugs. I love them. I love them so much. I love them to the point where I realized that, like my man George Washington said, no static, God not automatic, too much of anything, drugs, makes you an addict. I'm an addict. And just like everybody else out there who deals with addiction, it comes down to these minute by minute decisions to not consume. You know, they say take it one day at a time. And that's actually really true. Sometimes it's only taking it a minute at a time. But the big thing in those minutes when you're feeling weakness is having things that you can do and people that you can reach out to to help pull you through that. And really that just takes some time and some patience. But that first step is acknowledging that you have a problem that you want to get away from and being honest with yourself about it. You know, you can do this. You can get out of any hole that you dug yourself in. It just takes time and a little patience. None of us see the world the same. All of our opinions are different. You could have the same job as someone else. You could go to the same congregation. You could even have the same parents. But your experiences and your relationships are going to ultimately shape your opinion on how you see the world. And no one shares the same experiences or relationships. So we all see the world differently. And that's actually a really great thing. We all have varying opinions. But what's not so great is when you think that your opinion or when someone thinks that their opinion is THE opinion. You know what I'm saying? You shouldn't be so concrete in your beliefs that you shun what somebody else thinks. It's just not fair. It's not helping us reach a better place. Stand strong in your beliefs, but don't let those beliefs stand in the way of hearing someone else's opinion. The older I've gotten, the more I've realized how fortunate I am in society's viewpoint. What I mean by that is, I am a white, thin male who is straight. Now, society loves guys like me. But as I get older, I notice this reoccurring theme of suppression of people of color, women, people of different sexual orientation, and really celebrating people like me. The problem with that is that we're not encouraging collaboration with other people, which is leading us to think linearly. And that linear thinking is not only incorrect, but it's also volatile to us embracing what America truly tries to represent as being a melting pot of all people. So if we're not able to embrace the different opinions of others, especially those who don't belong to the same social class that I do, we could never hope to broaden our horizons. Everyone 
Everyone is so damn worried about being unique that we rarely remember that everything you see around you was derived off of some other sort of inspiration. Be it a person, an already made thing, a religion, a love, anything. We rarely take the time to master the fundamentals needed to create something before we start worrying about style, about being different. Look at Kobe. Straight up said that he stole his moves from MJ. But he developed the fundamentals before he worried about that. He made the layup before he did the turnaround. Beethoven took some of his stuff from Mozart, I'm sure. We use our outside influences to shape our style, but before that happens, we have to master the fundamentals. We have to have the tools to build the temple before we invite the people in. But if you suck, you definitely need more. I'll never forget the rant that David Grohl said regarding American Idol and X-Factor-like shows. David said, kids should go in their backyard and buy an old fucking drum set and get in their garage and just suck. And get their friends to come in and they'll suck too. And then they'll fucking start playing and they'll have the best time ever. And before you know it, they'll be Nirvana. I'm totally with that. I completely and 100% agree with that. You have to spend time really sucking, really getting in the trenches and getting down and dirty before you can expect to produce something good. You have to make the stick figures before you can make the full form nudes. You have to make the iPhone video in iMovie before you go get your red camera and shoot a full feature. You just, you have to. Sometimes you even have to have your first kid before you get good at parenting. But if you suck, you just might be in luck. this bizarre tendency to look at our heroes through these rose-colored glasses. We think that they got to stardom or prominence just by a cakewalk along the yellow brick road with Dorothy and the Tin Man. But if you take the time to find out about what your heroes went through and what led them to greatness now, you'll find that it isn't all roses and skittles. It isn't always easy for anybody in life. And when you take the time to read about your heroes, it really humanizes them. And it teaches us that they are people just like us. They deal with struggles and issues just like us. As the best-selling autobiography, Scar Tissue, by one of my heroes, Anthony Kiedis, told me, heroes have a lot of problems. The people we look up to, sometimes they have the most problems of all. But more than exposing us to an underbelly of our confidants, it more teaches us that, just like them, we can beat those problems. We can beat those problems. I'm not sure if it's a Western belief or how my parents raised me, Money seems to be the barometer for a lot of success in life. Now, I'll be the first to say that money can open a lot of doors. It can buy you the camcorder where you record your first film, or the rollerblades with which you go roller derby. But money should not be the sole focus of what you do in life. It'll cause you to hurt a lot of people and put a lot of relationships on the back burner. There's just so much more to life out there to experience and to see than stacks of cash. Though those stacks of cash are nice, I think it's fair to say that you can earn it while making high morals, high integrity, relationships a little bit higher on your spectrum. Because you cannot take money with you to wherever we go after this life. But you can't take experiences either, so you be the judge. Riddle me this, listener. Do you have a friend who is artistically inclined, 
maybe does art gallery shows? What about a friend who's in a band and is touring around the country? Maybe a friend who started a landscape and yard service business. So why is it that you don't support these friends? Now, I'm not just saying with your money. Keep your Benjamins in their pockets. I'm saying more so with your words of support, getting the word out to other friends. Oh, hey, Jim, I'm looking for someone to help me with my yard this weekend. Oh, hey, I actually know someone who uh, just started a business. His name's my friend. Hey, you can... That kind of stuff. You don't just have to give them your money. Give them your support. It takes a lot of courage to go out there and try to make something legit out of nothing. But we still continue to pour money into other directions and avenues and thinking that it's just willy-nilly and chill when we have a friend over there that we care about and who cares about us that is probably more than capable of doing the job. So next time that your drain is in trouble, do not call Roto-Rooter. Call your old pal Scooter. There are uncountable spoken and written languages in the world that it's often easy to get it kerfuffled. But one of the only things that can transcend any communication barrier is that of a smile. A smile is so easy to give, yet it costs literally nothing. It will not make you poor to smile, but shall enrich anyone who passes your smile. It can create happiness in your house, goodwill in business, and is the ultimate sign of friendship. It rejuvenates the weary, shines light on the sad, brings cheers to the cold-hearted. With any luck, your smile can encourage others to smile and feel good. But no one, in no place, under no circumstances, owes you a smile back. Men do not tell women to smile. They don't like it. Don't tell anyone to smile, no matter your race or gender. We do not need to tell other people how to hold their face. You are allowed to do what you want with your own face. But if you let the smile pass organically, so too will the love. It rejuvenates the weary, shines light on the sad. Brings cheers to the cold hearted. make you poor to smile, but shall enrich anyone who passes your smile. It can create happiness in your house, goodwill in business, and is the ultimate sign of friendship. It's almost second nature for us to insert our opinions on things when people decide to open up. Oh, I'm getting engaged. That's great. Let me tell you all these successful marriages I know of. Oh, I just lost a job. Great. Let me tell you about the last time I got fired. People have this tendency to just insert their opinion when really people just want to be heard. Sometimes you just need to shut up and listen. Sometimes you just need to nod your head, ask questions that will continue to snowball this person through their thoughts and their feelings and really help them through it. You know, why do you think that therapy as portrayed on television is often just some schmuck sitting in a chair? Because really, people don't want to be spoke at. They want to be listened to. started re-watching this show called The Weekenders, a show on Disney Channel some time ago, and the main character, Tino, was trying so desperately to get this other kid to like him. Now, after failed attempt after failed attempt, this kid finally comes out at the end of the episode and he just says, hey, sorry, I, I just don't like you. And that struck a chord with me when I was a kid, and it struck an even deeper chord with me as an adult. What I take away from that is that no one really owes you a damn thing. 
sure your parents should be nice to you because they raised you, or sure it would be nice if your childhood best friend came to your birthday parties, but they don't have to do that. They don't owe you jack shit. And for you to expect that of somebody else is not only unfair to them, it's also unfair to Tino. For a long time, I ran from the things I didn't like about myself. But it wasn't until I actually stopped and thought while listening to my friends Walter Mitty that I will not have a better friend than myself. And my friends see me through a lot of ups and a lot of downs, a lot of air balls and a lot of swishes. But I tell you, they are not in my head with me the entire day, just like your friends aren't with you. You really won't find a better friend than yourself. You came into this world alone, you'll leave the same way. You really can't expect someone to be a better friend to you than yourself because friends sadly come and go. That's just the nature of it. So why don't you do me a favor and yourself one too. Go walk to that mirror, you know the one, in your room that you look at before you leave the house every morning. And look into your eyes and lean in and kiss yourself. Nice long smooch. Thank you so much for listening. I really hope that you're able to take a few, if not a lot, of these things that we talked about and apply them to your life right away. Don't wait for any sort of benchmark. Don't wait for the end of the month or tomorrow or the next five minutes. Do it now. Do it immediately. You can fix the things that you want to fix about yourself and about your surroundings. You just got to put in a little bit of effort. I want to take some time to thank a few people really quickly. First and foremost, making new enemies, the family that allows me to do this and encourages me to do this as well as Lauren Records uh, I want to thank my producer Alex Crawford who always has my back in projects that I undertake sat in here in the booth and recorded with me uh, I want to thank Soapbox Milk Flood for these dope ass beats they've always had my back when it comes to these motivational minutes I also want to thank the editing team that allowed me to bounce a few ideas off of them you know these conversations need to be had I don't claim to know anything in fact, I don't think I know a lot of things. But what I do know is that I, I'm feeling some of these pressures and these anxieties, and I, I know that I'm not alone. If we're able to get over the things that are hard to talk about, then we can individually and holistically get better together. If you're feeling on top of the world right now, that's great. Keep that feeling up by any means necessary. But also help others come up too. If you're not feeling so good, keep after it. Keep believing. Keep understanding that feelings are just like seasons. They come and go. Change doesn't always happen so quickly, but if we keep plugging away, it will happen. Believe in yourself, believe that things can go your way, and I promise you that someday they will. Thanks for listening.